So probably the first question would be the how the fourteen year journey. Um first of all, just from the top, how has it been? I mean from Temus to Tintin, Ngara, Parklands and probably where we are going. But when it started out, when did you know that this is it for us and this is what we need to do? Um First of all, let me just say, it's been a very exciting, uh, humbling, uh, challenging uh, journey, uh, starting, of course, 14 years ago, 1999. Uh, uh, 17th January was our first service. We held it at Temus. And um, it was, it was uh, at, at a point in our lives where we knew that uh, we were called to do this and that there was no turning back. What Pastor Kathy and I will, would, would let you know is that we never had a plan B. When we started the work, we never had a plan B. We were not looking back. We were not uh, about to give in or give up. We were in it to go all the way. And so we did this with one focus, and that focus was we have to succeed in it. Yeah. But the beautiful thing is that we had had the Lord. The Lord had spoken to us in October of 1998 about starting the church. We had been through a season of prayer for about two years. And uh, around October, the Lord said, we start the church in January. And so through October, November, and December, we're preparing and praying and seeking God and just looking for the venues and, and uh, um, for the things that we needed to do to, uh, to, to put together to have a, su a successful service. And God is good. Uh, on 17th of January, we, we invited a few of our friends. We were about 50 people, and uh, we had our first service. Very exciting. We knew, without a shadow of doubt, that God had called us, and we knew that anything that God starts will always succeed and will always flourish. It may take time, it may take a bit of work, but it will always at the end uh, have the, uh, the, the, the marks of the fact that it, it came from God, and that is the mark of success. Mm -hmm. And so it's been a wonderful journey, Willis. We have seen uh, God taking us through uh, high moments. There have been challenging moments. There have been times when we've been through at the valley, I remember times of like Tintin, oh. when we could not be able to pay uh, uh, 40000 a week. Um, that was a time when I would lock in myself in the room and tell Pastor Kati, you go and deal with, the, uh, with Mr. Pujara. <laughs> and, uh, you know, <laughs> uh, we went through that season, then moved to Ngara, and uh, we had to pay, you know, a rent of about 200000 a month, up to where we are now, uh, in our own place. But God has been good, God has been faithful. Uh, the thing that we'd like to do, first of all, is just to give God the glory. And, uh, and, and to let you know that it's not been by, our, by effort or by our uh, ability or by our uh, uh, strength. It's not been by power or might. It's been by the mercies of God. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. And just from, yeah. the, the first service was, like, like we said, like Bishop has just said, it was glorious because we had all our friends come. And so we thought, wow, ministry is good. Church is good. <laughs> would advise anybody to start. If you're starting on this note, it's all good until the second service, <laughs> where all of them went back to their churches. And we wondered, Jehovah, where are all the people that were here last Sunday? <laughs> so, <laughs> so the journey began that second Sunday, and we started going up, down, up, down, up, down. But like Bishop says, we just knew this is it. We are not even looking back or sideways or at who has made it or not made it. We knew that we were in it to stay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just to pick up on what uh, Bishop said also, um, you kept saying while you were talking how you had the voice of the Lord and you knew this is what God had wanted to do. That is something that people have not understood. How important it is, is it for somebody to, especially when going into ministry, to one, hear the voice of God. And then you also said it took time and it took work. How important is it, first of all, even as a couple, yeah. to have that synergy and that cohesion and, yeah. and know that this is the voice of God and this is what we're going to do? I think that's the most important thing because, you see, when it comes to ministry, the foundation is, has God asked for it? I always say that God will never pay for what is not ordered. If God hasn't ordered for it, he's not obligated to pay for it. Mm. And so it's very important, especially in ministry, to know that God is the one who has ordered it. And... That is not just to hear, uh, you know, sometimes when you really want something, you can hear anything. Mm -hmm. When you really want to step out and do something, you, you can even imagine that you've heard the voice of God. But the voice of God is clear. And when you know it, you know that you've heard the voice of God. And how, how can I prove to you that we heard the voice of God? 
by what we are seeing today. The, what God is doing today is an indication that truly he's the one who started the work. Um, and so that is very, very important. The, the foundation of any ministry must be the fact that you've heard the voice of God. But after you've heard the voice of God comes the second part. You have to be willing to work. You have to be ready to labor. You have to be able to put your best foot forward. Every Sunday, every week, uh, Pastor Kathy and I have always uh, been very diligent and focused and have been very committed to the work of the ministry. There is no Sunday that I stand on that altar if I'm the one preaching that I haven't taken time to pray and to study and to wait on God. Um, I, I don't go back to my old notes and recycle messages and come and preach them to the people. I believe that I have to have a fresh word from the Lord. I have to wait on God. Not that every Sunday it will be like the last Sunday. There are Sundays when it's, it's amazing. There are the Sundays when it's low-keyed. And God is in all of them because sometimes the Lord will move with a big wave. Sometimes it's a small, still voice. But you have to know that you have waited on God and you've done your part. And that is something that I've endeavored to do uh, for the last 14 years. And I truly believe that the next 14 years, I'm even going to uh, uh, believe God to do more of that, uh, make sure that we are committed to ensuring that every time we stand on that altar, we are giving the best to JCC. Mm -hmm. yes. And mamas, uh, to say my mama Kanisa, yes. <laughs> as it were, uh, how important is it also to have like when the moments when he, like you said, he would lock himself in the room and, and tell you go deal with that. And the yeah. moments just when you had your low moments, because you would have easily said, you, you led us the wrong way. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> so how, how important is it also to ha just have that one mind? And then what becomes the role of the wife in this situation? I, I believe that uh, the, the Lord has called us as wives to be a helpmate. And uh, that's what God has helped me to be all this time. From the time we began, I actually thought that I was just going to be a helpmate and that's it to my husband. I never even thought that I was going to be ministering with him per se. So my work has always been to, to lift him up before God and to just uh, agree with what he says as the head. So mine is to really submit under his headship and say, yes, Lord. So when he says, uh, go and see this guy, because sometimes we couldn't even pay for the place, and, and, and my husband would tell me, this is the time I really am sensing prayer. Eh? <laughs> As the man of, of God, <laughs> I need to be in prayer right now. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I would really just ask God to, give, to grace me to go and, and talk to the concerned parties. And God would always give me favor. He, 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 he's a faithful God. And sometimes I would actually find challenges. Like maybe the man would be like, this Sunday you're not meeting. You're not meeting. And I will tell him, imagine we are. <laughs> Just imagine we are. Because I'm thinking, hey, we are not meeting, we go where? And do what? We have to. Because church must go on. And so we'll tell him, listen, one day we'll be paying you in advance. Right now I know we are struggling and trying to. But one day we'll be paying you in advance. So he kept on just uh, trusting us somehow. And uh, really as, as uh, my role as a wife, that's uh, th that's been it all the days just to to be a helpmate to my husband and to 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 just uh, f flow with him when he says this is the direction i say sir yes sir <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <And> also, <laughs> all right so how um again when you had all these challenges i mean people see you today uh like we would say that some people like the people who join church today uh in 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 a way they're coming at the end of the movie yeah uh, <laughs> the, the credits are about to roll yeah. but they were not there when you were sleeping on the floor tell yeah. us a bit about that wow willis that was an exciting <laughs> time um you see pastor kathy and i in 1996 1997 98 we decided that we are going to serve god and we left everything that we were doing to go into the ministry um and uh, because we didn't want anything to hold us back, we burned all the bridges. What I mean by that is the business that we're doing, we closed it down and we walked out of it to go and enter the ministry. And of course, that is where the journey of hardship and wilderness began. But we were so persuaded that this is what God had for us, that we are not about to turn back. And of course, that is how we ended up, of course, losing our home and going to stay with the widow and sleeping on the floor. And even when the church started, the church started when Pastor Kathy and I were on the floor. 
we would be sleeping on the floor the, from Monday to, 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 to Saturday. And then on Sunday morning, we wake up from that floor. And I'd go and preach on prosperity. And that God is a God that blesses you. Jehovah Jireh. That God is Jehovah Jireh. He'll provide for all of your needs. You are a millionaire. I'm a millionaire. Millionaires look like this, you know. <laughs> they wear their they trousers wear, you know. one leg at a time. <laughs> and I'll be preaching and saying how God is going to, how mm -hmm. God has already blessed us with all uh, spiritual blessing in heavenly places and he's made provision for every everything we need, you know. Uh, Jesus said, look at the parts of the air, you know. And I'll be preaching all those prosperity messages. And then after that, I go back to the floor. <laughs> And, uh, and we'll be sleeping on the floor. But see, uh, I've come to understand one thing. My situation doesn't have to match up with my revelation. Mm. And my situation does not necessarily define the word of God. Wow. The word of God is the word of God, no matter what I'm going through. And the revelation has the power to change the situation. If I keep believing, if I keep foca uh, focused, and if I keep uh, confessing it and, uh, and, uh, and declaring the word of God. Because the wo my words, our words have the power to shape our reality. Mm -hmm. And our reality is shaped by the words that we speak. So even on that, at the, uh, on, as I was uh, sleeping on the floor, uh, Pastor Kati and I keep decla kept declaring, not where we are, mm -hmm. but where we are going. Mm -hmm. And God uh, lifted us from, up from the floor, moved us to our, uh, to our beautiful house in, in, in Kilimani. And then from there, by uh, one step at a time, God continued to bring our confession into manifestation mm. and he brought the he changed the situation because of our revelation mm. and 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 now we are not where we used to be we, we are not there yet <laughs> because the jet has to come <laughs> you know uh, just you see yeah, a jet has to come mm -hmm. uh, but we we know that god is working in us and uh, he is taking us from level to level and from glory to glory mm -hmm. and that has been the journey mm -hmm. yeah. and during that journey mom mm. uh dad has often said that the he, he would walk into the house and you, there would never be a dull moment yeah. with you, uh, especially in terms of just keeping your praise. Mm. Tell us a bit about how, how you kept your praise during that. You, you know, Willis, I realized that uh, <laughs> where we were, if we allowed anything like uh, uh, discouragement to hit us, we would never have risen up. Mm. It would have killed us right there. And because of that realization, we purposed that the joy of the Lord shall be our strength. We will not allow the joy of the Lord to depart from us. So it was something deliberate. Uh, we kept on praying. I, I, I just kept on telling God, Father, keep my joy. I cannot go down. I cannot allow myself. Because I knew that uh, it's in that moment where actually we are now wives come into play as helpmate. Because I knew my husband was feeling horrible that he, he wasn't able to cater for us as a family. He was feeling terrible. So sometimes he would, and, and I, I would even like him to, to, to talk about it a little, how he would even be crying in the middle of the streets. Yeah, mm. <laughs> yeah I, I used to work with this. You know, I'm very responsible mm -hmm. as, a, as a man. I like to be responsible for my family. And, uh, I, I, you know, I believe what the Word of God says that, uh, you know, a man who is not, doesn't care for his own household is worse than an infidel. And uh, it, that used to really hit on me because I wanted to really take care of my family. And so when I'd be walking in the streets of Nairobi and I imagine that I'm staying in somebody's house, mm. sleeping on the floor with my wife and my two children, uh, not able to pay school fees for, for Vanessa, who was at that time uh, out of school. Other kids would be going to school and Vanessa would be left in the house. Uh, not able to buy food or clothes for my, for my family or for my wife. I would be weeping and tears would be rolling down my, my, my face as I walked in the streets of Nairobi. But one thing that I, I, I knew in my heart is that I was called into ministry. And I wasn't about to walk away from the call to go and get a job or to go and do business. I wasn't going to do that. I was so focused and I just kept telling God, God, bring it to pass that which you have put in my heart. And that's why we least when, when finally we started JCC, I became very diligent and very focused because I knew this was the opportunity mm. that God had given to me to get my family out of that captivity of lack and, uh, and, the, and the bondage of insufficiency. And, uh, and God has, of course, has, has brought us out of that. Mm -hmm. But now when I would see him in that kind of pain, right. I, I knew exactly what he was going through. So as a wise woman, I would pray to God, 
to help me not to show him my tears. So what I would do is like in the middle of the night, I would just be crying. I, I would cover myself and really cry to God and, and just tell God, Father, come and rescue us, help us, you know, get us out of, of, of this situation or give us the grace to, to handle what you're taking us through because we knew that we were going through God's process because you cannot be a man of God or a woman of God without going through the process of God because he has to take you through that and he, he kept on uh, telling us he's, there is a purpose. There is, he's taking us through that for a purpose. So I was allowing God to make me strong for the sake of my husband because I knew if he saw me torn apart, then it would also tear him apart. I, I was like, <laughs> if he's already going through this without me talking. Because <laughs> sometimes you feel like saying, actually, the Bible says. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but then, you, you know, know, the thing about it is this, uh, mm -hmm. you know, just to add on to what the did, she, she became such a beacon of strength for me because she never at one time ever asked me for what I, she knew I could provide. She never made me feel bad because of where we were. If anything, she took so much of the beating when things went wrong on my behalf. Uh, for example, like even to go and meet the man of Tintin. Uh, she'd do that and she'd go and meet with him joyfully, knowing that I needed to be in, 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 in prayer, waiting on God for the church. She would wake up in the morning when we started, when we were still at uh, a Harvest. Yeah. And she would go in the morning and drive all the way to Udero to go and collect the seats and then bring them to church set them up, arrange the PA, put the PA together, uh, make sure that everything is in order, then come to the house and pick me, the man of God. <laughs> and then we'll drive the back man to again, the, the man again. The man again. again. <laughs> the man again. Power for the hour. And, and then we'll drive back to church. <laughs> Meanwhile, the seats I was picking, eh? Mm -hmm. there were those, um, not plastic, the metal ones, the ones you fold. And then every woman that came with stockings never went back with stockings <laughs> because they had to run. <laughs> But, uh, but it, was, it, was, it was incredible, it was wonderful. And, and the beautiful thing is that, uh, you see, that was our reality then. So we mm. never saw anything beyond that. We never really like, uh, we were not complaining because we were just excited to be in ministry. Yeah. And uh, 40 people would come, 30, uh, 70, then the church started to grow. Suddenly harvest was too small. Um, we were sitting about 90 people. Then now that's when we moved to Tintin. And I remember Willis, when suddenly we, the harvest could not be work and we had to move to Tintin, and we were to pay 17000 a Sunday. Oh, my God. <laughs> I told my wife, baby, this is not doable. This mountain, this mountain has is refused a, to be moved. <laughs> but, but every time and every step we took, and that's why I'm so confident that mm. even the mountain of the mortgage that you're facing, I know mm. that God's going to help us move it. Mm. Every step that we took was a bigger step than the previous step. And guess what? God always elevated us, yeah. not only to the level of the mountain, mm. but to fly higher mm. than the mountain. Mm. And before we knew it, we were able to not only pay that 17000 but we had more than enough to pay sometimes in advance. And then, of course, the Lord would move us from that to forty, then from that to sixty, then from that to 400000 When we moved to Ngara, we used to pay 400000 a 400, month. 400000 a month. And we would pay three months in advance. The man said we have to pay three months in advance. So we had to pay 1.2 eh? million. <laughs> that was like, what? <laughs> but you know something? God always provided and God always enlarged our faith to be able to handle that kind of a weight. Mm -hmm. And that is how it works. You have a very big responsibility, uh, even as the church continues growing, to direct all these people to the direction where God wants them to go. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to ask you to just, like, when you know it's time to move, yes. and when you know you have to tell these people who probably themselves have also just started settling in. Yeah. <laughs> or are like, okay, now this is the place. Ngara is the place. You yeah. can't move anywhere. Then you tell them, okay, it's time to enlarge the place of our yeah. habitation. Mm -hmm. yeah. Where, how do you get that confidence to come and tell us, okay, this is it. This is what we need to do. Mm -hmm. And then how does mom come in now, uh, like in the bathing of Daughters of Zion, for example, when do you know that now this is what we need to do? This is the void that we need to fill. That having that responsibility as a man and also as the woman. Yeah, um, it's never easy, Willis, to move. It's never easy. One of the things that I've, I've come to realize as a pastor is that uh, people get quickly, uh, are very comfortable and very quickly. And uh, it's, uh, it's like the routine of I know which bus to take, where to drop, where to sit. Mm -hmm. Everything is just 
the way I want it. And, and people get comfortable and settle in to that kind of a, a routine. Um, human beings love routine. We are, we, we are <coughs> uh, creatures of routine. Let's say you find people who are sleep at a certain time, wake up at a certain time, pray at a certain time. And so moving in has always been a challenge. I'll tell you that uh, when we moved from Tintin to Ngara, of course we had the march, we walked uh, uh, from, uh, from, from town to Ngara, but we still lost quite a, a few people on, on the way to, 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 to Ngara. And then from Ngara, of course, to Parklands, which was not very far away, and it was even a better facility. We still find that there were, found that there were people who, were, who didn't come with us. But one of the things I've come to realize is this, is that when God says go, don't stay. Because if the cloud moves, and you are left by the cloud, you will be by yourself. Mm. You see, the cloud was meant to give uh, cover uh, during the day, uh, 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 cover the children of Israel in the journeys in the wilderness during the day and give them light at night. It was the bright light that shone uh, during the night. And, and if, you, if, you miss out, if you missed out on that cloud and the cloud moved, you're by yourself. And so what I've realized is this, is that every time God says we go, I... Don't wait for the church or for anybody to tell me and to have a discussion and form a committee <laughs> to try and find out whether that was a good idea. Is it when God says go, I go. If you're coming, we go together. If you're not coming, God bless you. We'll see you in the next st station in life. Because even when I look at, for example, uh, our moving from uh, from Gara to where we are, God just like brought it to happen at the right time. Because immediately after that that whole construction of the roads and so forth in that area became, came in and it was so strong and would have really been inconvenienced if we didn't move, on the, uh, if we didn't move in tandem with God. Now, it's never easy because every movement uh, comes with a lot of uh, uh, responsibility in terms of uh, finances and uh, 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 you know, just managing the whole uh, transition, building, putting together uh, uh, ourselves so we can be able to expand the place. Many times when we move into a place, it's not convenient uh, in terms of the way the, the, the facility had been made, like even here in Parklands. But once I know that God is in something, I, I don't wait. And, and we'll discuss a little bit about where we are going as a church later, but I just want to say, even here in Parklands, this is not the destination. This is just a station. We are on our way to our own 15,000-seater cathedral in our Project Canaan land. And that is something that I'm excited about. And that's why I cannot allow the mortgage to hold us down and ground us because I know that God is taking us to a higher level and to a higher height. And I'm trusting God that very soon one of our celebration shall be in our new facility. Yeah. Um, so to talk about Daughters of Zion, maybe I'll let my wife say a little bit about, <laughs> about the Daughters of Zion. Like I said, in the beginning, I actually thought that uh, my responsibility was just going to be to support this handsome man of God. <laughs> <laughs> and to be just his best friend and just, just love him and, you know, just treat him well when he came home from ministry. Until the Lord put the ministry of Daughters of Zion in his spirit. And uh, he began to tell me that whatever we were going through in the wilderness, you know, that the, the lack of God really prepared me for the woman. At that time, I didn't know he was preparing me for the woman because I, I lacked everything that a woman needs. You know, the, 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 the necessities, I lacked, I couldn't afford nothing. And uh, God was just preparing me for the woman so that I could let her know that it doesn't matter how low she is, that God would pick her up from any level and also to stand with the husband, no matter how bad situations are, no matter how much luck you're going through, you can stand with your husband and still make him feel like the man, irrespective. And so my husband saw it and, and, and he said to me, honey, th this is it. I see you, you know, raising women and, and, and speaking to women and that's why you paid such a price. That's why you went through what, what you, you were going through. And then I started to see it. When he said it and he spoke it, then I started to see it. And God started to give me compassion for the woman. He started to just, just draw me to the woman. And he changed my blood group from be positive to daughters of Zion. 
positive. Do <laughs> <laughs> <D> positive. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he just, I mean, I just, I just, he made me just feel the woman and, and you know, so uh, that's how it came about. My husband saw it, spoke it, and then it came to, to be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So now we are, uh, th there is Women Without Limits, yes. still like a, a branch out of DOZ. So yeah. many other things are growing. Testimonies keep coming every day. Yeah. And also in, in your lives collectively, mm. I mean, it's just one, it's growth from one step to another. Yeah. Very important is how do you not let all this growth and everything get to your head? <laughs> <laughs> I think one of the things that we always keep remembering mm. is we were on the floor. Mm. I will never forget mm. that I was on the floor. And um, when I remember how we slept in that little room in Gong on the floor, mm. I know it cannot be my ability, mm. my oratory skills, mm. it cannot be my captivating uh, uh, ability to catch the crowd. It has nothing to do with that. Mm. In fact, um, somebody the other day told me that uh, he used to come to uh, Faith Evangelistic Ministry when I was a young man. Mm. And we had all these um, friends, uh, all these people in the ministry, uh, Pastor Ambrose, Pastor Roche, Pastor Bob, and we were all there in the, in the, in the in Faith, Faith Evangelistic Ministry. And he told me, uh, this just last Sunday, he said, when I used to come, <laughs> I never imagined that you were going to be a pastor of such an incredible Out church. of all the rest. Eh? Said, I mean, when I looked, they had so, they had so much gift. You did not like you so much. <laughs> and so, Willis, I say that to say this. We have always known and will always continue to know that it is the hand of God mm. that is on our lives and that is why we are doing what we are doing. That is nothing that I. That is not something that I'm about to forget. Mm. Uh, either me or my wife, or even the leadership of Jubilee Christian Church, we will always give God all the glory. He will always be the center, uh, uh, the center of what you're doing in JCC, because this work mm. is not about Alan and Kathy. Mm. This work is about Jesus exalted, mm. Jesus lifted up, mm. and He said, "If I be exalted, mm. I will draw all men." To myself mm. amen and you know i have uh, this scripture that's always in my mind it's always in my spirit um saul when saul was uh, commanded by god on what to do you know we know the story of the amalekites and all he did he didn't do the will of god and the prophet came to him and he said to him so when you are little in your own eyes did god not make you king and that scripture is always in my spirit. To know that when you remain little in your own eyes, then God will keep exalting you. That's why he says he gives grace to the humble, mm. okay, and resists the proud. And God has kept us, even just by his word, to let us know that this thing is not by might, eh? it's not what we do, it's what he does through us. And still on that, how do you handle the criticism that comes with it all. Uh, the people who are against, quote unquote, the prosperity message, people who post pictures on the internet, and, 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 and I mean, even the church members, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so, <laughs> how, how, how do you handle that? Because then it's, it's really, it reflects also on the, on, the, on, on the people and how they handle it. You know, you know, what, let me tell you something with this. One of the things, uh, uh, how do I handle it? I rejoice. <laughs> I rejoice to note, uh, to know that I have actually become a talk. When people are talking about you, you shouldn't be complaining. You should be so happy. The fact that they can, they can spend a few moments yeah. talking about you, it's an indication, or like I like to say, it's indicative. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> that you're doing something yeah. noteworthy, and something that people will talk about. So mm. I never allow anyone or anything that they say to, uh, um, to, to, to either detour me or to make me lose my focus. If anything, I, I'm like, wow, they're talking about me. Then there must be something I'm saying. There's something mm. I've, I've put on my, as a profile uh, uh, photo on my WhatsApp. And that is, it says that a tiger is not bothered about the opinion of the sheep. 
A tiger is not bothered about the opinion of the sheep. You will never see a tiger or a lion thinking about what the sheep or, uh, you know, what a squirrel or what, a, you know, an antelope said about them. They're not bothered. So you have to get to a place where you just keep doing what God has called you to do mm. and do it with all faithfulness, of course, with all humility. But don't ever be detoured by, um, by the, the, the words of your haters because people will always hate. And the amazing thing is that the more you succeed, the more haters you attract, but also the more you succeed, the more people you, ins the more people you, you inspire. Mm. And so I know that even some of the people that talk negatively are really inspired by our story. And uh, I was just, uh, uh, I just saw uh, the other day, somebody posted, in fact today, uh, a picture of me on Facebook mm. when I was in the estate, uh, looking so skinny, uh, <laughs> around 1982, 1983, 84, there. I'm not sure which year it is. Um, and, and just looking at that lets me know that I've come such a long way mm. and walked such a long journey. And the reason I'm saying that is this. My story with Pastor Kathy should be an inspiration to people who are aspiring for greatness. And so I wouldn't be bothered by the haters. I will keep inspiring those people who want to be a success. Mm. And how do you deal with it? Uh, really, it, it's really what Bishop is saying because uh, ultimately you will always attract both. Those who love you and those who can't stand you. And you know, it's, it's expected. It happened even in the day, days of Jesus. Jesus was also hated by many yeah. <laughs> and loved by others. <laughs> and so what we do is just we keep on doing what God has called us to do. You know what? We actually don't pay attention to critics. We don't at all. It's, we've purposed that, that we are not going to pay attention. You say what you want. We know what we are doing. We know who we believe. We are servants of the Most High God. We fear the Lord. And so if you're going to criticize what... And by the way, well, I don't know this prosperity message. I don't know whether there is a poverty message. <laughs> I've never had it. <laughs> I've never had it. Yeah. From the days of, of Christ, I mean, till I've never had. Yeah. You know, and, and in the Bible, there was only one poor man. And he gave a lot of wisdom. But he was forgotten as soon as that wisdom was used. Because poverty is not synonymous with salvation. There is no we nobility, should, there is no nobility in, in poverty. poverty. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so. so we continue preaching the prosperity message. Yeah. And uh, in fact, we're getting even more deeper revelations. Mm. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> so what is the future of, of JCC? Um, just for the people who watch the, not only the people who probably are, like you said, inspired by your story, probably the other ministers, mm. not just uh, the congregation, but probably other ministers who are also looking and saying, you know, if he can do it, I can do it. What is the future? Uh, where do you see us going? Um, first of all, let me just say, I'm very excited uh, celebrating 14 years of, of, uh, of this commission and of this vision. Uh, Pastor Kathy and I are just sitting back and, uh, so excited and thrilled by what we are seeing mm. God having done in, in, in our lives. And, uh, and so let me just, even before I say where, where we're going, just take a, a moment and just thank God yeah. for where he's brought us from mm. and, uh, and where he has brought us to. Um, where I see JCC going, number one, I'm very, very passionate about winning souls and especially the young people. I am called to the youth. I'm called to the young generation. The young people are the ones that make my heart just excited. Uh, they make my baby leap. They excite me. They just cause my juice to flow, juices to flow. And every day I'm thinking, how are we going to touch the young people? How are we going to reach out to them? And so where I see us going, the first thing I want to see more is us attracting more young people and bringing them in, whether through uh, music, uh, uh, events, and uh, and, and just uh, bringing them into the house of God to let them know that being a Christian doesn't mean that uh, you are stupid or foolish or out of touch with, 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 you know, with yourself or uh, you're outdated. Uh, but to let them know that you, know, you can be saved and hit. You can be saved and fly. You can be saved and, and with it. And, uh, and so that's the first thing I want to see. I want to see a, a, a move of God in that people. And, and really, so I'll be very honest with you and tell you that I've been really praying and asking God to really move among the youth. I'm trusting God to see 40, 50,000 young people coming to church every Sunday morning, excited about God, 
uh, forgetting about drunk, uh, uh, drinking and, 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 and alcohol and immorality and drugs and just getting hooked on to God and plugged into Jesus. Uh, and so th that's one thing I want us to really get strong in and, uh, and, and, and really embark on reaching out and winning souls in universities, in colleges, and in school. Uh, the other place where I see us going, of course, is development of our infrastructure. What I mean by that is I want us to build a school from kindergarten all the way to high school. And of course, in the future, I see us also putting up a, a college and a university and so forth and so forth. And so that is really in place. And uh, that is something I'd like us to, 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 to do uh, and to do uh, uh, in the near future. Another thing I'd like us to, uh, I would want us to, 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 to I want to see it happen is us moving strongly in the media. We've had a great opportunity to minister through citizen television. Uh, Pastor Kati has a powerful uh, 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 a program that is going on on NTV. But I want us to, I want to see more of that happen. I'm trusting God that we can be on, uh, on a television network, doing live services every Sunday morning, uh, ministering to the nation, not only to Kenya, but uh, to East Africa and to the larger uh, uh, continent of Africa. And so that's something that is, um, is really in my heart, it's something that I'm praying for, it's something that I'm trusting God for. And I, and I pray that very soon maybe we shall be able to link up with the television station where we shall be doing the uh, production in JCC and then linking it up to their station so where they can be able to broadcast it. And we can also broadcast it, of course, by television or by other, uh, uh, whatever, like uh, 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 the internet. Uh, so that is something that I, I'm also looking, looking forward to. The other thing I'd like to see is us being having a church in every county uh as we speak right now we have about 11 branches 12 branches but i'm seeing a situation where we shall have a church in every in every county very soon we are going into nevasha we of course uh, embarking in kitengela next sunday uh, we are starting our church in kitengela uh very soon we'll be going to nyeri to eldoret uh, uh, uh and and other 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 uh, counties in all 47 counties we want to be there of course also we have gone international uh, we have a church in Atlanta, the pastor is here. We have a church in Dallas, we have a church in London, we have a church in South Africa. I want to see a situation where we have churches also in other major cities. Sydney, uh, Paris, uh, Cologne, Germany. Uh, I want to have church in, uh, in LA. The, the Lord spoke to me prophetically through a prophet that one of the, uh, one of the cities that God is going to make us very strong is Los Angeles. And so... Uh, that is something that I, I would also want to see come out strongly. The other thing I want to, uh, uh, where we're going also, is a Bible school. Uh, uh, I've always believed in raising my own sons, who then I sent to go and start churches. So in all those churches that we, we, we have, and the churches that we're going to have, we are going to have sons that have come from their house. And if not just this house, maybe other houses like Jesse Nakuru or Jesse Mombasa. And then we send them out and go and start, uh, start churches. But I'd like us to have a strong uh, uh, Bible school. And uh, right now, of course, we have uh, postponed the vision of Albi, but we'll be coming back and we'll be coming back stronger and better. And so the vision is great. Uh, we want to see us impacting, of course, the ladies. We want to have conferences and conventions. I'm looking forward to the time when we shall be able to host uh, 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 great concerts and bring in people like Marvin Wynan, Donnie McClarkin, and so forth. Uh, so the vision is there and vision is moving forward. Vision is always progressive. Uh, vision is, is not static in terms of uh, even what I saw when we started. Uh, it's getting clearer as we move forward. Um, for example, I saw International Mission Enterprises where we'll be bringing pastors here in JCC Partners and equipping them, blessing them, giving them bicycles and uh, 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 just uh, taking care of them, giving them a one-week holiday. Uh, pastors from places deep down in, in the interior of, of Kenya, bringing them in and just ministering to them and then empowering them and sending them back refreshed to go back and, and do the work of the ministry. And so the vision is, go, is growing. The vision is getting progressive and continuous. I'm very excited for what God has done in 14 years, but I see in the next 14 years as growing from uh, where we are right now, we have an attendance of about uh, seven, 8,000, to where we shall be able to hit 80,000 members, uh, 90,000 members with churches in every county. So mm -hmm. I'm very excited. Mm -hmm. Now this is the fun part of the interview. <laughs> yeah. Right, uh, people see Bishop Allen and Reverend Kathy Kuna up on stage, and uh, it is easy to forget that you're human. Yeah. So I'm going to ask you a few questions. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Willis. Right, Willis. <laughs> First of all, do you watch movies? Do you 
<laughs> like words, we just like just we just watched fast. like we just watched flight uh-huh. by Denzel Washington. <laughs> Very beautiful. <laughs> so that answers it. But are you, are you asking? <laughs> yes. Do you watch movies? I know Dad is a Manchester United fan. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Which is a good direction for the church. <laughs> yes, we leave. <laughs> yes. So do you watch sports? I mean, what do you do for fun? You go first. <laughs> okay. Uh, like you say, watch movies. We have a date night and uh, we, we just have fun. Nothing but fun. So we watch movies, we play Scrabble and I win. <laughs> and yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, we she's my company. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't play at it. You're a nice girl. No, she no, has we, to win. See, play is for winning. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we just play this <laughs> <laughs> There's no submission <laughs> eh, in playing. <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> we play games, we play Scrabble, we play golf. You know, he introduced yeah. me to golf, uh, and now Finally. and now I love it. <laughs> yeah. He tried for years, and for I just years. wasn't getting it at all. But now I love it. Yeah, actually, you know, the, the thing about it is that, like, um, when when the daughters of Zion so graciously paid for us to go to Mauritius uh, for her birthday, her uh, 25th aren't birthday. they just amazing, these daughters? Thank you so much, daughters of Zion. And, uh, if you can you do that again, rock. it'll yeah. be a blessing. <laughs> and, uh, and, and, and we went to Mauritius, and, yeah. uh, and, and the thing about it was that uh, she wasn't playing golf, and they had these beautiful golf courses. They have beautiful golf courses in Mauritius. And, uh, and so she'd just be driving me around in the cart, and I'm playing alone. And I thought, well, honey, this is not on. We should be doing it together. We should be playing together. And I kept talking and talking and talking. But now I am glad to report, <laughs> we listen to Muru, only here, that uh, <laughs> you will only hear it here. Right. <laughs> that Mr. Kadi is finally uh, a golfer. And not yeah. only is she a golfer, but she's a good golfer. Mm-hmm. One thing about Pastor Kadi is that she, she's like me. If she does something, she has to do it well. It better work. It better work. It better work. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and so to answer your question, we have a very vibrant, exciting life. Not just in the ministry or on the pulpit, but we have a good life out of the pulpit. Because that is how you get balance. That's how you get balance. Mm-hmm. You see, many ministers are out of balance. It's just ministry, 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 work, work, mm-hmm. work. And you find that because of that, the, the marriages are falling apart. Their kids are not excited about, about ministry. Mm-hmm. Uh, even them, they burn out and completely get worn out. Because mm-hmm. they don't have another life out of ministry. Mm. You are not just a spiritual being. You are a social being. You are a, a, a physical being. You need to take mm. care of your body. You need to take care of your uh, a social life. You need to be able to go out and have, uh, entertain yourself, watch a good movie, and laugh. On Sunday after service, yeah. uh, uh, like last Sunday after service, uh, put my wife into the car. We went out and had some beautiful lunch. Then we came home and just sat back with the kids and watched the movie. And... Uh, and that really brings that, binds us as a family, as a couple, Pastor Kati and I, she's my best friend. And I can go anywhere with her and be okay. We've been to Cape Town together. We've been to uh, Florida. We've been to places, and we're trusting God to go to Hawaii soon. Yeah. Uh, last year, we went to Scotland. And, uh, and that is important because you are able to enjoy life as you serve God. Serving God is not a death sentence. It's not a... <laughs> It's fun, actually. It's fun. It's yeah. wonderful. It's amazing. <laughs> and, uh, and so you don't have to travel to Scotland. You can just take a, a car and drive to Nevasha. Uh, go to Olepolos and eat meat. But, but it's important as a couple mm. and as a family to build that uh, 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 aspect of having a life mm. beyond uh, the pulpit and beyond business or beyond your career where you become a, 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 a whole man that is properly balanced. I will never Fredic, uh, forget what Dr. Frederick Price told me. Frederick Price is one of the men of God that has been in the ministry for many, many years. Many people may not know him now, but he's about 80 years old. And Frederick Price, we were with him in Zimbabwe. And he told me that after every two months, he goes for scuba diving. He's a scuba diver. And he goes to either Bermuda or Bahamas, or he goes to Hawaii, and he does a, a, a one-week dive. A- and he told me that he realized that as he was, he was serving God in ministry, he was not taking care of himself, and he was getting uh, mm. uh, tired, uh, bitter, upset about people. Even people, things that people, it wasn't people's fault. He would just be upset with the people. <laughs> and so he started to take uh, uh, those times out. And when he came back to the ministry, he would come in fresh, he would come in strong, and he would come in inspired. And that's what Pastor Kathy and I 
have decided. Mm -hmm. 14 years is, is a short time. Mm. We intend to be doing this for the next 40 years. Mm. Uh, I'm not about to quit ministry. I'm, I'm very young. I'm, I've only, I'm only 46. I intend to be doing this by the time I'm 86. And, and not, maybe not as a senior pastor, but as a minister of the gospel. But one thing that I want to do even that time is I want to still have a life and to still be able to enjoy what I do and look back and say, I live a full life. So yeah. when, you're, when, when you're at home and mama asks you this, when he's <laughs> home, is he, is he like when you're watching a movie, for example? Yeah. And uh, the he says, Lord Jesus. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I bind that. I bind that demon. <laughs> Devil, you're a liar. And also, how is he as a father, also, as well? Now, you know what? He is so much fun to be with. Because, I mean, we just let our hair down and we just, we, we, we go all out. And that, he's, he's good. He's fun to be with, and if it's a movie, he enjoys it actually more than everyone else, because eh? <laughs> he really concentrates. He gets it. He's, you know, he's he's good to go. Mm -hmm. He's not he's not spiri at that time, <laughs> but when you find him spiri, oh, you better let him be, because he's 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 always uh, he prays a lot, prays a lot, so he knows when to be a, a, a fun person he knows when to be a spiritual man he knows he knows the four faces of a man oh he takes care of that mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> so what what for example for people who will ask like the 21 question what is who is your favorite actor for example an actress and your uh, favorite kind of services my favorite actor uh, I, I think is uh, Denzel Washington I also love Denzel I, I also I, I like yeah. Denzel Washington yeah. uh, my favorite actress would be Halle Berry, for obvious reasons. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> I won't even talk. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, my favorite team, Manchester mm -hmm. United, yeah. and uh, and Gorma here. Uh, Gorma is not doing so well, but uh, but I'm with you. Um, another one. Your favorite reporter. <laughs> <laughs> Willis of course, Willis Raburo. Uh, truth course. meter. Uh, Willis Raburo. <laughs> truth meter. <That. laughs> oh, you make me watch news. You know, I, I'm not very keen on news <laughs> because there's so much bad news, but every <laughs> Friday, truth meter must be on. Come and run. Yeah, come and run. Come and run. All right. Yeah. And just uh, maybe as a final thoughts, um, this is now your opportunity to look at into the cameras and there will be that person who is watching this who will not be at a good place. There will be that person who is watching this who will, who will be at a good place. Yeah. Uh, for those, both of those people, there are people who watch it who are not born again. Yeah. S those who maybe are hopeless, discouraged, yeah. uh, scared, uh, beat down by life. And those who think to Mefika, and like you're saying, they don't want to move, they're in a comfort zone. Yeah. Just to address those particular people, both of you, uh, just yeah. take time mm. and talk to them. Thank you, Father. What I would say is that don't give up, never give up. If you have a dream, keep it alive. Know that right now you may not have the, the, the know-how, how it's going to all come together. But you just keep taking a step at a time because weeping endures for a night, but joy comes in the morning. So we started at a very low level where we never actually imagined that would be who we are today. And yet, this is just a tip of the iceberg. We believe that God is taking us so far. And so what we would advise you is, please, don't give up. No matter what, don't throw in that towel. Keep holding on. God is faithful. The Bible records that he who began a good work in you is faithful to complete it. Amen. I, I would just want to say to somebody who probably feels like uh, their life is not going the way they want it to go. And to let you know that the most important thing in anybody's life is this word called focus. I remember when we started the ministry in 1999, the Lord told me, I want you to have purity, focus, and integrity. And that is a very important combination. Be very focused. Always walk in purity, keep integrity, and keep believing that he who began a good work in you, he is faithful to complete it. One of the things I've come to see about God 
is that he will never start something that he doesn't intend to finish. All he asks from us is to cooperate with him. And sometimes in the journey of doing what God has called you to do, there will be moments of discouragement. There are, there are times when personally and Pastor Kathy, we've, we've been discouraged and we felt like it's not going to work out. But in those moments, we pick up ourselves and go another day. And I've learned, I've learned through the years, because I'm the kind of a person who wants to see everything come together at one point. But I've learned to live one day at a time. And the, the, the thing I want to leave with you is this. If God has given you today, celebrate today, rejoice in today, focus what you need to do today, be the very best today, because if you can take care of the days, the weeks will take care of themselves. If you can take care of the weeks, the years will take care of themselves. So don't give up. Don't look back. Know that if God has started it, he is able to finish it. For those of you who are not born again, get saved. <laughs> Enough said. <laughs> Enough said. <laughs> the moral of the story is this, that wherever you are, no matter how small you start, God can always be the active ingredient that will propel you to new and greater dimensions. And so we pray for you that you will remember that God is love and that you will continue to spread that love wherever you go. Until next time, my name is Willis Saburu. The journey continues in Afset.